welcome to The Print. I am Akanksha Mishra and you are watching Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the globe. First up, we have the furthest ever Milky Way-like galaxy discovered by scientists this week which has been named Rebels 25. This galaxy is disc-shaped and is also a strongly rotation-oriented galaxy just like the Milky Way. It was discovered by a group of global scientists using the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, which is an international astronomy facility. The interesting thing about this is that the light that is being emitted from this galaxy, which is reaching us through the ALMA telescope, is from when the universe was only 700 million years old. That is extremely early given the current age of the universe is 13.8 billion years old and the current age of the Milky Way is 13.6 billion years old. The scientists that published their paper in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Journal on 7th October pointed out that the discovery of this galaxy raises a lot of questions about how galaxies like the Milky Way have formed. According to existing theories, Early galaxies are messy, chaotic and not well designed the way the Milky Way is currently. Our Milky Way took 13.6 billion years to get to the current orderly state that it is in. However, Rebels 25 is very similar in characteristics to the Milky Way despite being seen only 700 million years after the universe was formed. The galaxy has similar spiral-shaped arms and an elongated central bar just like the Milky Way, thus leading scientists to re-examine their theory about what is the timescale on which galaxies develop and how long did it take for galaxies in the early universe to reach an orderly state. Next up, we are talking about the 73% decline in monitored wildlife population sizes globally from 1970 to 2020. This is from the Worldwide Fund's Living Planet Report, which was released on 10th October. It rings a strong alarm about wildlife, biodiversity and ecosystems around the world. The biggest threat to wildlife populations around the world, according to the report, is habitat loss and degradation. And the strongest decline that was seen in wildlife over the past 50 years has been in freshwater ecosystems, which have seen an 85% decline. It is important to keep in mind that the change that's recorded in this report is in the average size of the population of different species and it's not in absolute numbers. But even then, the report has pointed out large declines, especially in Indian animals like vultures, where certain species saw an 89% decline in their population from 2002 to 2022. That's merely 20 years. A large part of this, the report says, is driven by climate change mixed with ecological degradation. And without actual conservation efforts, we will be unable to stop this nature loss. Our next story is from Siberia, where a 2,800-year-old burial excavated by archaeologists showed a striking resemblance to the burial rituals of the Scythians, who are incidentally a community that lived miles away in modern-day Crimea 2,400 years ago. So, in a study published in the Antiquity Journal on 8th October, scientists from Russia explain an elaborate burial ritual that they discovered in southern Siberia, where a possible person of importance was buried alongside 18 horses and a woman, possibly as a sacrifice. The study explains the exact clusters in which these human and horse bones were found and how carbon dating showed that these remains were from the 900 BC. There were also some weapons, beads and headgear that was found alongside the humans and horses, thus indicating that it was probably a burial ritual. The scientists pointed out that the pattern in which the bones were distributed and also the decorations on the headgear and the weapons all resemble Scythian culture, or at least the description of the Scythian culture and burial rituals written by the Greek historian Herodotus in his book The Histories. It is quite rare to find evidence of Scythian culture in a time period before their empire and in a region beyond their extent. However, the authors of the study said that it is evidence of cross-cultural links within East and Central Asia and it might even be indicative of what were the origins of the Scythian community. Finally, we have a new study that looks at quite a peculiar question. Can fungi recognize shapes? The answer might surprise you. Scientists from Japan conducted a study to assess whether fungal spores have the cognitive capacity to tell the difference between shapes, even though they don't technically have brains. 
what the scientists did was conduct an experiment where the same type of wood decaying fungi was given two different shaped blocks to grow on. The study will be in the December 2024 edition of the Fungal Ecology Journal. Now the theory of the scientists was to observe whether the fungi spores would use the same method of spreading in both the wooden blocks despite their different shapes. However, they saw that in the cross arrangement block of wood, the fungi spores had stronger connection in the outermost regions of the block and weaker in the middle. In the circular piece of wood though, the fungi spores had similar connection degrees throughout. This, according to the scientists, was an indication of decision-making by the fungi, where each spore was communicating with the other to decide how to spread in order to maximize benefit. That is all for this week. This is Akanksha Mishra. Follow the print for more such news updates.